Elvis thing. Okay. Uh, inga reo, inga mana, inga karanga, inga maha, tēnā tatau. Um, hi atu ki a koe, te rangatira, koe tau mai nei ki Aotearoa. Mi hi atu ki a koe. Te marei kura, uh, Helen, mi hi atu ki a koe. Uh, koutou rā. Good to be with you all this evening, uh, ladies and gentlemen. It's a little bit uh, overwhelming standing next to such a... Uh, such uh, suspicious people. Anyway, when I was invited to come along and join the Kopapa tonight, my mind immediately uh, reverted to a, uh, a, a discussion I was a party to up at Victoria University in the late 80s. Uh, our Prime Minister at the time, David Longy, was, this is when we were debating about whether to shift from first past the post to MMP. And uh, Prime Minister was there, David Longy, and I remember he said, uh, asking politicians to redesign uh, the electoral system is like asking uh, um, um, uh, panel beaters to redesign uh, intersections. That, that, that piece of wisdom has never lost me. And it, it came to mind when uh, I, I saw what the kaupapa was for the quarter tonight. Three, three years ago, uh, I started my current role. And uh, on a Monday, uh, at midnight that night, the Prime Minister announced that she was shutting down the country that Wednesday. Uh, that, was a, that was an interesting way to start my new role. Killed for that. Uh, uh, I think all of us were amazed at what then happened. Uh, facing an existential threat, the Prime Minister issued the call uh, for us to create uh, Fortress New Zealand. And as compelling and as inspiring as she can be on occasion, or used to be it apparently, um, it was really the unified endeavour of, of the people of this land that gave rise to what we subsequently called the miracle of the team of five million. Am I right? So it was us. That, that actually gave rise to that miracle. The other thing that was like really amazing to I think all of us was uh, faced with that existential threat, how quickly money flowed, like really quickly, to anything and everything it seemed to. And for, for us in the Māori community, it, it was actually a bit sobering to reflect after decades of asking for resourcing to support equitable outcomes facing our existential threat and to be told that uh, we can't afford it, it was sobering to reflect, oh, clearly the wrong people were facing an existential threat previously. I'll leave that little piece of wisdom with you to reflect on further. As the year went on, at the end of that year, 2020 still, I was invited to be a part of a workshop that the Ministry of Health uh, called to see what lessons we could learn from the miracle of the team of five million to, to achieve in due course something approximating to an ubiquitous rollout of the vaccine that people expected to turn up in due course. My first question to the workshop was, so what example of public policy could we draw and learn some lessons for that historically we've implemented that is universally available to everyone? We scratched our heads and soon realised that we couldn't think of a single thing. If you can think of one, come and see me after. Now, now that was, I was gobsmacked. That thought had never occurred to me. Fresh food, no. Roads, footpaths, no. Uh, housing, no. Education, not a thing. Not for everybody. Not for everybody. Where my mind immediately went was, it's got to be systemic. Right? If, if, if we've applied ourselves to this endeavour, and we've never been able to pull off ubiquity, we, we must have created uh, some constitutional machinery of government arrangements, clearly, that cannot deliver ubiquity. Well, that vexed me for quite some time. And over summer, as I was lying in the sun, I wondered, how the blazes did that happen? I realised something. My Michael was born in 1903, and when he was a young man, the world was ruled by emperors and kings, mostly. Right When my mum was born in, uh, in 33, in her youth, the emperors were mostly gone, the kings were still around, a few dictators were doing their thing, and only a few fledgling democracies. What I realised was we haven't been doing this very long. You know, for those who've had any exposure to software development <laughs> and what a minimum viable product is, you, that you bring it to market in order to address what is the key problem and functional issues that are needed, it seemed to me that the version one, the minimum viable product, the initial launch of democracy that we'd embraced, was primarily focused on the problems that it was seeking to address, the unfit and inappropriate use of, of power, yeah, tech, the, the, the reasonably effective uh, aggregation and risk managed distribution of resources, yeah, tick, et cetera, et cetera. But what it clearly wasn't designed to do was to deliver ubiquitous 
or universal outcomes to everybody. I, I'd go so far as to say that thought never even occurred to anybody in the 20th century when they were thinking about these things. Might be pushing it too far. Anyway, not long after that, it's my good friends from uh, the People Speak, an NGO, uh, Aotearoa-based NGO that is uh, trying, it's just ordinary Kiwis, trying to be active in the promulgation and championing of participative and deliberative democratic processes, approached me uh, in my capacity as, as uh, the CEO of Ngāti Toa to see if Ngāti Toa would be interested in partnering with them in, in, in a safe-to-fail experimentation and deliberative democracy. Sounds like a good damn idea to me, I said. And so we, uh, over the last year and a half, we've proceeded to uh, think it through, engage with our community. Excuse me, I've got to do, do a little bit of this. And uh, ultimately, we landed on um, uh, what, what we're calling in Porirua Talano Wānanga. So quick background. In the Pacific, for those who've had any exposure to the Pacific, no matter what part of the Pacific you go into, the, the word talanoa is used by everybody, and it's basically the idea that the community, and usually their villages, will, will spend time to deliberate around the issues, good and bad, that pertain to that community. Sounds exactly like the kind of kaupapa and, and, and mechanism that we're after, right? So a Pacific leader in Porirua gifted us that name. Okay, why don't we stand up a talanoa? Our initial engagement with our leadership uh, uh, landed on two streams of thinking. One is that we would stand up a, a standing forum uh, a, 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 of community leaders um, uh, with a constituency, with a constituency that we'd come together to talk about whatever we wanted. And it, and it wasn't, a, and it isn't a permission asking exercise. It's about us owning our own space, drawing on our constituency, our resources, our what's available to us, building a shared understanding, building a coalition, and acting intentionally. Uh, we're, we're pretty confident that the local politicians will pay attention. Why wouldn't they? The second leg of our initiative is, is the adoption uh, or repurposing of this idea of a citizens' assembly, where our vision is to uh, repurpose it by, by localising it with our tikanga, our, our constitutional partnership orientation from the, our, our tiriti, and uh, we can talk about that further, but that, that's what we're planning on doing and are looking excitedly to launch our first go at that shortly, focused on the kaupapa of climate change. Okay, bring it to a wrap. Uh, I agree with every word that's been said in terms of the description of the problem. I have a different view on what the cause root cause is. My view is that even if we had a perfectly transparent and open government, if it was ineffective, we'd still have the stretching of our social contract in society. To my mind, what's going on, uh, I won't overstate it, but substantively what's going on is that we have ineffective government everywhere, democratic forms, and the people who are most dispossessed, who are most marginalised, are sick and tired of not having uh, uh, the outcomes that uh, everybody else apparently is getting and that apparently all the public policy is supposed to deliver. Now, Ngāti is not in the business of asking uh, for much, and it's our intention to uh, be the change we want to see. We are looking to own our space, own our community. We're not in charge of the whole damn world, but we've got plenty to say in Porirua and across here to engage with our community leadership, to engage our, our people on the ground, and to accumulate evidence in our safe to fail experimentation and community driven de democratic processes. And uh, I bet you right now, uh, both local and central government in due course will pay attention. Kia ora tato.